ancient world of Babylonians and Egyptians, mathematics was mostly used for everyday problems like measuring the area of a storage container to see how much grain could fit in. As mathematics developed over time and became more complex, Greek scholars like Diophantus developed new methods. Diophantus was the first mathematician to use symbols for quantities which are unknown. But it would take another thousand years for standard algebraic notations to become the norm. The fall of the Roman Empire led to a decline in mathematics in the West. But in the East, when Caliph al-Mansur established Baghdad as the capital in 762 AD, it quickly became the center of learning. In Baghdad, a library called the House of Wisdom was founded. It housed texts from various cultures, including works by Greek mathematicians like Euclid, Apollonians, and Diophantus, as well as Indian scholars like Brahmagupta. In the year 830, mathematician Al-Khwarizmi presented his findings to the library. The contents of his work became the foundation of modern algebra. Al-Khwarizmi introduced basic algebraic operations, described by him as balancing, along with the concept of rejoining. Balancing meant to cancel the terms out, while rejoining meant to perform operations on both sides of an equation. By the way, the word rejoining used by Al-Khwarizmi was Al-Jabr, a term which we now use to call algebra what it is. Here's an example of what Al-Khwarizmi meant by his terms. Suppose we have an equation. According to Al-Khwarizmi, to rejoin it, we must add 9 to both sides. And then to balance it, we must go ahead and perform the operation to cancel the terms out. And so we continue to do the same until the equation is eventually solved for x. Surprisingly, Arabic scholars did not use symbols like we do when describing their operations. Instead, they would write out the problem completely. Here's what I mean. Instead of writing in symbols this equation here, Al-Khwarizmi wrote, I multiplied a half of it and a dirham by a third of it and a dirham. A dirham was a coin, a concept which Al-Khwarizmi used to mean one. Al-Khwarizmi proposed that all quadratic equations, where the highest power is either x or x squared, can be simplified into six basic forms. They are the following. x always represent the unknown number, while a, b, and c always represent known quantities. Al-Khwarizmi's algebra still largely relied on geometry. He produced a geometric method for solving quadratic equations. By the way, this example and information in general comes from the maths book by DK. Consider purchasing it using the link in the description. Also, if you have been enjoying this video so far, please give it a like and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you, and let's get back to it. How can we solve the equation x squared plus 10x equals 39 geometrically? Well, x squared would be represented by a square with all sides equal to x. Then it would be added to two rectangles, which are a representation of 10x. The longer side would be equal to 5, while the shorter side is equal to x. The rectangles then are attached by their x sides to the square where all sides are equal to x. The total area would equal 39. Al-Khwarizmi used the empty space to create another square. This time, all the sides are equal to 5. The area of this square would be 5 squared, meaning that now we have one large square with an area of 25 plus 39, in total adding up to 64. So how can we solve for x? Each side of the rectangle is x plus 5, so we can write it as x plus 5 times x plus 5 equals 64. We can combine the two parentheses into 1, making x plus 5 squared equals 64. Let's use the balance technique founded by Al-Khwarizmi to take the square root of both sides. We then get x plus 5 equals 8, and to balance it even further, we subtract by 5 from both sides. There you have it, x is equal to 3. We change the geometric diagram accordingly. Such were the discoveries of Al-Khwarizmi. Of course, there were many more contributors who developed algebra further. For example, Egyptian mathematician Abu Kamil, 
went on to develop the concept of rational and irrational numbers, while the Iranian scholar Sharaf al-Din al-Tuzi contributed to the development of all types of cubic equations. Without these scholars, mathematics could have developed in a very different way. If you're interested to know more about the history of math, check out some of my other videos. Otherwise, I'll see you later.